Uh, and speak to Anat Alain Beck, who is a business law professor at Case Western Reserve University. Anat, good to see you again. Uh, Twitter recently stopped enforcing its policy on misleading information about coronavirus. It had suspended more than 11,000 accounts for COVID misinformation. Is this exactly the kind of thing the EU is talking about? I think the EU is very concerned, and it's not the first time, and Twitter is not the only platform that the EU has uh, been very concerned about, and that is with regards to uh, misinformation online, with regards to hate speech. What exactly does freedom of speech cover? And again, uh, freedom of speech and constitutional rights are things that are protected as in the U.S. Constitution, the U.N., other, uh, you know, in, in Europe, other countries have different protections and different ideas of what they consider to be hate speech or misinformation and what it is that they want to have in terms of content moderation online. Yeah. So uh, how does one monitor hate speech when the interpretations can be quite different? I mean, the EU compared to the United States, compared to other territories that have their own laws. How do you reconcile those? That's a great question, and I think uh, we can use an example. For example, uh, Facebook or uh, Meta had put together this governance board, and the governance board was supposed to try to tackle these, and they had experts from the U.S., from other countries, and uh, these experts uh, were supposed to devise ways to co-op with this. And I think it's a way as an example of a platform that wants to do its own content moderation before you have other governments, uh, you know, trying to tell them what to do. So that's uh, one example of uh, a company doing that. It's a great example. Uh, so the EU says platforms with more than 45 million monthly users will have to report to the block every six months. And so therefore this applies to, you already mentioned uh, Meta, so we're talking Facebook, Google as well, Alphabet, whatever name you want to give those different companies. Is the EU setting an international standard here? I think so, definitely. And the EU has been a leader in this with regards to privacy protection, but with, with regards to protection of their uh, citizens. And I think this is a, another example where the EU is taking the lead on this and they're being more protective uh, than the U.S., for example. And then the question is, is the U.S. going to lead, it's going to follow or not the lead of the EU? And that we will have to see because, again, the rules of the game are very different here in the United States. Uh, Anna, just finally, there's one very specific mention of an issue regarding the EU's desire to get these companies to comply, deep fake videos. The EU says that deep fake videos being uh, posted on these platforms could lead up to fines of up to 6% of any company's global income. What's the issue with deep fake videos? What's happening with this particular bit of technology? I was actually discussing that with a colleague today who was, an, uh, was a constitutional expert here um, at CASE. And uh, what we were basically arguing or discussing are these fines are these as a result of a penalty or is it really a tax? Or is the EU trying to tax uh, American platforms, American companies and uh, participate in, in the, are they really concerned or is it that they want a part of the revenue? And so there's this, I think it's, it's more than the videos, but it's also uh, what kind of recourse are they taking against the company? Do we see it as a penalty? And the higher the amount, by the way, the more, at least in the United States, according to our laws, you see it as a penalty. The, the lower the amount, you see that as a, as a form of a tax. So that is also a very interesting thing. And that is when they're trying to do that, are they doing that because they want to tax U.S. companies and have basically a part of the revenues? Or are they really concerned about these videos and the content in these videos um, and they want to uh, prevent that by having very hefty penalties that perhaps would deter companies from uh, not moderating or regulating that on their platforms. And I will say one more thing, which I, I told my friend, and that is it's a cost of doing business, right? So at the end of the day, companies like Twitter, like Meta, others are going to decide, is it worth it for them? Uh, to, to try to comply, or is it just one cost of doing business and they'll just pay the fines? Anat Alonbeck, really appreciate it, as always. Thanks, and you. thanks, by the way, you're in Cleveland, so you've stayed up late for us. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor.